Hello YouTube and YouTubettes. Welcome to an album review. I have a very special formula that I use to make grades, so you will hear fractions and <laughs> like a 5.73 or whatever. I'm, I won't give that away, but in this video, I would like to review the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This was released on May 26, 1967, produced by George Martin, engineered by Jeff Emmerich. This was inspired by the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds, which was to be more experimental. And uh, this album was about making themselves an alter ego as Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It's a really cool album made on many lists as the number one album of all time. And I think it definitely is one of the most creative albums ever made. The cover is a classic. The Beatles are in colorful suits with a crowd of famous wax figures, including themselves, <laughs> as their younger selves in suits and in their mop top haircuts. There's also a garden with red flowers spelling beetles, yellow flowers shaped like a guitar and other shapes. I definitely think this is a great album cover. So colorful, so creative. And I give the album cover a 10 out of 10. Now on to the songs. The first song is called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the title track. And this one is a rockin' number along with uh, an orchestral, uh, orchestral sounds in the background. And it starts out with kind of an orchestra warming up. So that's kind of a cool idea. So this kind of goes back and forth between hard, you know, just regular rock music and symphonic sounds. And uh, it, it's very catchy and artistic, and it does very, very well. Uh, I give this an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The second song is called With a Little Help From My Friends, written by Paul McCartney and John Lennon, and sung by Ringo Starr. This is a very kind of a mellow, uh, groovy, catchy number. My favorite thing about this song is the bass line. It's a bass line that's probably inspired by Brian Wilson's bass lines on Pet Sounds as it moves around and it's kind of melodic and it's not just hitting the bass notes, you know, that are typically kind of the boring, just holding down the bass, if that makes sense. This one is a, you know, it's kind of a groovy, catchy number as well as a creative and artistic and it does well across the board, and I give this one an 8.6 out of 10. The next track is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney, sung by John Lennon. I love this song. Well, let, let's say I have two different sides of this. I love the verses the music and the verses. I love the intro with the harpsichord. I love the lyrics. But I'm not a huge fan of the chorus musically. For some reason, uh, I just don't. I think the, the, the uh, it's a little too poppy on that part, but then it balances out the song so it gets a higher grade because I do count catchiness and artistic separately. So the I guess the chorus balances out the verses in terms of that. Lyrically, it's very creative and poetic. Uh, a lot of people believe think that it's about LSD, Lucy Sky Diamonds. John Lennon had, had always denied it, and I don't know why he, he would deny it if it was. I mean, they were pretty open about doing drugs, so I don't know why that would be problem but uh, he says it was a drawing or a painting that a, his son Julian did they called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds but I really do love this song it's one of my favorites on the album I give it a 9.4 out of 10 the next song is Getting Better written by 
Paul McCartney and or Lennon and McCartney. And I'm not a huge fan of this song, although the the there's a really cool section, the bridge right when it's sort of this Indian sound and they sing, I used to be cool to my woman. So leading right into that part is really cool. And I'm not exactly sure what all that those instruments are, but I do love that section of it. Overall, it's still a solid song, but I give it a 7.8 out of 10. I'm fixing a hole. The next song is Fixing a Hole, written by Lennon and McCartney, sung by Paul. This song has some cool moments, and when I listen to it, it's enjoyable, it's pretty. For some reason, it doesn't stick out to me. I don't really think of this song very much. But I do love the harpsichord at the beginning. There's some uh, nice bass line in this, and there's a part where he starts singing up a bit, and it's it's a cool moment. And it's there's some beauty to this track, but for whatever reason, I'm, I'm not really into it. I give this song a 7.6 out of 10. Wednesday morning at the next song is She's Leaving Home by Lennon and McCartney, sung by Paul. And uh, this is a beautiful song. I, I've, I really like this song. It's got a nice melody. It's got some nice uh, symphonic, uh, whatever that is at the beginning. It's a very beautiful song, well sung. And I give this song a an 8.4 out of 10. The next song is Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite by Lennon and McCartney, sung by John Lennon. I really love this song. It's I, I love kind of this, you know, circus music anyway, but uh, I do love the way John put this together. I read somewhere that he, or I heard him in an interview say that he saw something about a circus on a poster and it was and it, the wording being for the bit of benefit of Mr. Kite or something was on there and it inspired this song. So that's kind of a cool thing, but it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Actually, it's got a 10 in everything except for the lyrical hook, I guess you could say. The poetic lyric is a 10, but everything else is a 10. Uh, so overall, this song gets a 9.6 out of 10. The next song is Within You, Without You by George Harrison, his only composition on this album. Uh, this is a very artistic song that I really appreciate done, you know, in his, he got really into the sitar for a while, and there's a lot of that on this album. This song has several tens in my scoring but there are some low points in terms of musical catchiness and uh, lyrical accessibility. I, I, I don't, I mean, obviously that wasn't the intent of this song. Uh, it was meant to be more intro, in perspective. Uh, lyrically, I think it's some sort of mystic, uh, I don't know, it seems like some sort of Eastern mysticism or New Age or something, but uh, I do appreciate the music of this song, but it's not one that I listen to very much. It's not my favorite Harrison song. I give this a 7.2 out of 10. The next song is When I'm 64 by Paul or by Lennon and McCartney, uh, sung by Paul. This is my least favorite song on the album. It's not a horrible song, it just doesn't, it's not up to par with the rest of the album. Uh, this is the least, the art side of the music is only a 4 out of 10 on this one. And the lyrical poetry is low as well, only a 3. But uh, other than that, it does well on my grading. But it's just kind of a silly song, I don't really take it too seriously and I, it doesn't really pull me in too much. I give this song a 6.6 .6 out of 10. Ah. 
The next song is Lovely Rita by Lennon and McCartney, sung by Paul. And this is a, I, I really like this song. It's a quirky number. I like the effects on the uh, vocals, on the chorus. And there's some funny sound effects in here. And this one does uh, very well across the board. The, I guess the least on this would be uh, lyrical poetry. It's not necessarily creative, that creative lyric, but it's still a six out of 10 on that. But everything else is at least an eight. And I give this song an 8.6 out of 10. The next track is Good Morning, Good Morning by Lennon and McCartney, sung by John Lennon. And I really love this song. It's got a great production. The trumpets sound great. There's some a lot of sound effects on this one. There's some uh, music that goes backwards and animals. And, and it's a great melody. And John Lennon's voice is very unique. A lot of people don't like it, but I think it's, it's a very cool voice. And especially when it has a little bit of a distortion on it, like it does on this one. But I really love this song. I kind of wonder if it was inspired by Pet Sounds in terms of, because at the end of the album, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, there was dogs barking and a train passing by. But uh, I kind of wonder if they were inspired by that a bit on this song. But uh, this song is strong across the board. I give it a 9.0 out of 10. Next is the Sgt. Pepper, uh, Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band Reprise. And it's a completely different, not completely, but a different production. Whereas the first one had more orchestrations on it, this one was more rocking. And I am particularly fascinated by Ringo's drumming on this. Just a nice heavy beat. But a, a nice uh, reprise of the song, the opening track, but they did it a little differently this time. So I give this one, this version of it gets a little bit lower um, than the first one, because I think the first one is a little bit better, but this one's good in a different way. But I give it an 8.4 out of 10. The final track on the album is A Day in the Life, written by Lennon and McCartney, sung both by, there's sections by Lennon, sections by Park Kapal, and this is a masterpiece, an artistic masterpiece. It's possible that, that these were two different songs, one that John wrote and one that Paul wrote, that they kind of spliced together, that they wanted to use, but they were kind of incomplete, so they put them together, and then you know there's just all kinds of craziness on this you know the counting when you hear Ringo counting I think up but anyway and then this orchestra is kind of going up and and it explodes into what Paul does and then goes back to what John does between the two I probably prefer John's and in general I've always liked John better or John's music better than Paul's but altogether, this is a masterpiece. Uh, Paul's is good too. And the way it ends is just bizarre, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, apparently, the high tone that you hear at the end was to annoy, or John said to, was in, to annoy his, his dog, <laughs> which is funny. But uh, this is a masterpiece. I couldn't quite give it a 10. I mean, that's very difficult only because the catchiness of it and the lyrical hook only gets a nine on each of those, but a 10 on everything else. And so this track gets a 9.6 out of 10. The flow of the album is definitely a 10 out of 10. This is one of the first, if not the first, pop rock albums to uh, have songs flow together between two different songs or three, you know. To where songs just kind of don't stop between the tracks and so it was meant to be thought of when it was released as this cohesive whole and people got it 
and it was a smash. I mean, one of the considered to be one of the greatest albums of all time. To me, I think that the number one thing about this album is the production. There's a lot of experimental production and creativity in this album, and I think that's what is the best thing about it and some of the sound effects. I think song-wise there's some really really great songs in here but then there's some so-so songs as well. So individually the songs aren't all great but to me it's as a cohesive whole it is a 10 out of 10. And so this is uh, one of the greatest albums of all time listed as number one on many many charts. So now I will pull out my handy dandy computer and calculate my formula. And this album gets an 8.64 out of 10. Thank you and have a wonderful day.